So, getting ready for a session on Covid in the morning. So first thing, get rifle filled up. Make sure my mags are full. My decoys. I have a freezer. I've got a bait in the freezer. In the form of a rabbit eye. That locked in place. Check the bleed valve. It's not going to need much. That's bang on. Release bleed valve. This is a tricky bit on here, I'm scaring this off, but it's just practice technique. <clears throat> Back in place. It's a quick fill there, it's off. Put the plug back in, stop any dirt and grind getting in there. And that's as easy as it is to fill your rifle to 190 bar with Ultimate Sporter. A lot of people have asked me about this, is it a different silencer to Q-Tech on a uh, Ultimate Sporter? It's not, not the Q-Tech silencer here. This is just a neoprene cover, neoprene wraparound cover. You just cut the size and put it over. It protects the end of the silencer from bumps and scrapes, all sort of weather as well, if it's poking out of a vehicle or an eye, it stops rain getting on it. But, when you fill your sporters up, them adapters have an habit of catch it silences, you take it off. So with this on, when I'm refilling, it just prevents it, if it comes off a bit sharp, a bit fast, it don't scrape on silencers, so you're not creating any scrapes or scratches. So it serves a couple of purposes that, obviously, Concealment as well. There's no black shiny barrel poking out of hide. It's like a matte green colour, olive green, whatever you want to call it. And that just takes that shine off end of barrel when you're uh, poking out an eye for concealment purposes. So just do a bit of organising for my kit. I'll be taking in boy. Pair of gloves. Obviously I've got my camo suit, weather's changing a bit now, I think the temperature's going to be at about 12 degrees. No wind really forecast in the morning, about 4 or 5 mile an hour. But I would imagine it's going to be quite nippy in the morning now, so I'll get wrapped up well. Always take the layers off, you can't put them on if you haven't got them. Got my snud, which I use regular. I've visited this uh, hide for a while, it's inside the ollie bush, you'll have seen a video on it, so take your secretaries. They'll come in handy for trimming anyway, uh, away any excess foliage. Always take a knife. Always handy to have a knife in your bag. Got a few clips. I can hear my pot is rattling outside now. Got a few like bulldog clips, different sizes. Always keep a few of them in my bag. Good for pinning uh, camo netting to one side and stuff like that. Maybe some branches that might get in your way. This is my cradle that I made to keep me uh, decoys looking realistic. I've got a Krona Magpie, I'll be using it morning there in the freezer. I'll get them out last thing tonight so they defrost a little bit. Basically, your two prongs here go into the ground, bird's legs go through these two hoops, and then there's a little spiky bit on the end of here, and that'll stick underneath bird's chin. What it does, just makes it present itself better, looks lifelike, it's stood up, it look nice and on point and on sharp, like it's got its weights about it. Uh, you'll have seen these being made on Hunter's Vermin's channel, that's obviously where I got the idea from. They're perfect actually, and uh, I've utilised this quite a lot of times and it'll come in handy in the morning. My usual camo bag. 
nothing in here in a minute. Obviously I'm going to load it up with stuff that I'm gathering now. The only thing that is in here is a wallet. Inside this wallet is all my permission slips for all my different permissions signed off by landowners. Uh, I have been stopped by police before. Uh, obviously we go out at some stupid times in the morning. Uh, which is it's unusual behaviour for most people so I have been pulled over a few times once they see all this or have even been stopped on permission once you show me permission slips they tend to be uh, quite amicable with you and they'll just leave you about to go about your business obviously alongside that uh, I'll have the Primos Jimmy Sticks uh, the Gen 2 of these, I can't stress the value of this, of these, it can be anywhere, uneven ground, you can extend legs, have it down to its shortest, legs spread out so you can, you can drop your height down or obviously you can adjust it as you need to as each shot presents. Top swivels, simple trigger there, which uh, you press that and you've got any uh, operation on these legs, whatever you choose to do. Push it forward, push it back to the side, whatever. But they'll be coming with me in the morning. I'll just sit on my seat, pop in front of the eye, looking at a shooting window that I've already created. And then uh, this will give me a nice steady platform to get my shots off with. So now all that's just about ready. I've filled rifle up. I'd already tested zero, zero's bang on. Uh, rifle stored securely in like an even temperature, let's call it. So it never really loses zero unless it takes a knock. I always test it, it's good practice. You want to be bang on when you're shooting live quiet. Obviously aim at game, he's uh, your main kills. So I'm all set up, ready to go really. I've even got my clothes out upstairs so I'm uh, ready for morning, my warm weather gear underneath my camo. So I'm all set up, ready to go. Obviously I'm in cabin today. Uh, I'm getting down to the last bits if I'm being honest. I've mounted a TV up on wall, but I've got a bigger TV coming tomorrow actually. It's on a proper stand and it's going to go in that corner. So that'll be coming down later today. I've got a new TV to put up this weekend after I've done shooting in the morning. I'm only building a wall outside today, so I've got a few bits to do. Keep busy today, time will pass and it'll be good to get out on hunt. Uh, I haven't hunted as much as what I'd like recently, but I've had this cabin project and other stuff that I've had to do, family commitments and that, so thankfully they're just about out of the way now. I'm ready to uh, start uploading some more regular videos. Morning everyone. I'm out this morning. I'm watching this uh, rubbish dump area. The original plan but to uh, the turn hide inside an ollie bush. But there's been some sort of event on a farm, I think it must be a wedding. There's all marquees and fire pits and all of the stuff set up in that area, so this is my second choice. I've got an hide set up here and well concealed. There's usually quite a few COVID's frequent this area. I've set a crow decoy out in cradle. I've got a rabbit hide for bait. Daybreak's just arrived. So hopefully, shouldn't be much longer. We should have a bit of activity. First visitor, common buzzard. There's a good chance he'll make me rabbit bait if he wants it. He can have it. This area will attract magpies and covers anyway, without any bait. Beautiful sight for us in the morning.
hopefully. This calls alert. Call is in the area, there's some food of that. I might get a visitor soon. That's first my pie down. Took a bit of waiting to be honest with you. Probably about an hour went by after daybreak. It landed in a bush at back at dumping ground. About 40 yards. I just get a little bit of rolled over. Took it nice and clean, it dropped. Same bush. Not the young one that, well this year's young. Let's see if any more turn up. That might have spooked cross that.
Well, it's turned into a beautiful morning. Sun's come through now. I uh, did notice last night before even thought about coming out that there were a frost developing. It's the first frost of the year in South Yorkshire. Uh, driving here this morning, just going a few country lanes and the frost on side at roads. Uh, sure fire, we're knowing that winter's coming. Slowly but surely, we're definitely into autumn now. I like to see seasons change. Uh, it's a good thing about living in UK, we do get four seasons. I know they're a bit mixed up these days, but when they do come, you can see change. Winter's prime time for hunting for me, you know, particularly with magpies and crows. They're easier to bait up, same with squirrels. It's, uh, food sources are a bit more concentrated, so they're a bit easier to find hot spots and get on different uh, quarry. watching a, a wood pigeon fly over there. Uh, just had three wood pigeon in quick succession. One outside it, like slurry pond, and two out of a bush. Uh, we're feeding on berries in bush, I think it's an old thorn bush. Uh, shot one, the other one hung about, I shot that as well. I'm glad I've got them three woodies. Uh, I missed a sitter earlier, which you'll see in video. They're only at about 10 yards. Uh, I get a little bit of hold over but not enough, uh, miscalculated really and it flew off, I plucked a few uh, neck feathers and it flew off unarmed. So I've redeemed myself, three wood pigeon, I've also had another magpie off camera, uh, I was watching a wood pigeon in bush that I'd uh, shot them two magpies from this morning. So I was watching that and magpie come to land, so I took that clean with a body shot. But then when I looked at camcorder, it just didn't capture it. Uh, I don't know what happened. It were recording and then it, for some reason it stopped itself. So unfortunately I didn't get that one on camera, but not been a bad session. Three magpies, three wood pigeons so far. I've still got uh, a bit more time in the morning, so hopefully I might be able to bag another magpie or two. Been watching this bird uh, quite a bit of the morning. Not sure what it is. Anybody can let me know. Drop a comment. This is the hide I've been using today. Had this in place for about a year. Probably needs a little bit more concealment on front. I visited it for a long time and uh, I think 
I've got a stacked up fell away with uh, winds that we've probably had at some point. That's where I've been shooting from. It's uh, been a productive hide. I've had four wood pigeon and three magpies. Magpies are a nightmare to retrieve. They're stuck in all thick undergrowth, so I'm not even going to bother with them. But overall, really good session. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.